Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our host, Colonel Michael Heimel, Director of the National Military Medical Center. Thanks, Wendy. Well, welcome everybody to uh, <clears throat> what is really a, a great day and a great event, and I think um, emphasizes uh, not only what we do so well in military medicine and here at Walter Reed, but the great partnerships that we have with national and international leaders, um, including our partnership with the National Endowments of Arts. And Chairman Chu, thank you very much for being here. Uh, Rusty, great to, to have you back um, at Walter Reed Bethesda. Um, I want to just kind of briefly tell you how I think this all fits in to what has really been the legacy of Walter Reed National Military Medical Center and the legacy of military medicine in our country. Um, Recently, I've started telling a little bit of a history story about Walter Reed and the National Naval Medical Center, and I don't think the folks over here at the NICO have heard it, so if you'll indulge me for just a minute. Um, you know, everybody knows Walter Reed, Army physician, discovered that, that mosquitoes transmit yellow fever uh, around the turn of the century, 1900. Um, but what people don't realize is that singular discovery by Walter Reed really launched a hundred years of military medicine driving innovation and advancement in American medicine. And if you watch the, what happened over the 1900s, the development of antibiotics in support of World War II and care in World War II, uh, at one point in the 1960s, about half of all of the vaccines used in the world were invented and patented by the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. And so you have this leadership of military medicine at the forefront of American medicine. And then in 1942, uh, President Roosevelt's vision of a National Naval Medical Center to support wounded, ill, and injured sailors as he saw World War II coming in February 5th, 1942 is realized when the National Naval Medical Center at Bethesda was commissioned. And Rear Admiral Ben Morrell, the father of the Seabees, was the man who cut the ribbon and oversaw the construction of that hospital, of our hospital. And in his opening remarks at the, the grand opening, he said, we hope and expect to become the finest establishment in the world for the teaching and practice of military medicine. What Admiral Morrell and President Roosevelt in the United States Navy opened on that day was a place where Walter Reed's legacy could be continued by advancing the teaching and practice of military medicine. And that's what we do today, and I think that's one of the things that we recognize today. Uh, Dr. Or Chairman Chu and I were talking earlier, and there are so many great scientific advancements and so many great clinical trials that our staff is in, involved in. But one of the things that I have come to appreciate in the year plus that I have been here is the impact that the arts have in allowing our patients to open up and benefit, sometimes just enough to open them up for traditional therapies. And now the trick is, the challenge is, how do we advance that by putting science behind it? And I think what we're announcing today and the partnership that we have really allows us to continue that legacy of Walter Reed and National Naval Medical Center into the future by advancing the teaching and practice of, military, of medicine involving the arts. And we're going to do some wonderful things here in this building. We're about to launch a clinical trial involving music therapy so that we can use imaging techniques to see what happens in someone's brain in real time as they participate in music therapy. And what we've seen with our mask program and our arts program is absolutely tremendous. And I think this is really just another step in the legacy forward of this great institution in support not just of our wounded, ill, and injured service members and all of our patients, but in techniques and practices that are gonna be spiraled out and become common practices in American medicine as we go forward. So thank you for joining us today. It's very, very exciting. Um, what we are doing here, and I really look forward to hearing from the speakers. Uh, and thank you again for all of your support. Thank you, Colonel Heimel. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce the director of the National Intrepid Center of Excellence, uh, Captain Walt Greenhalgh. Colonel Heimel, I need glasses. I don't know. What, what's your secret, sir? <laughs> well, welcome, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, thank you, uh, Commander Pettit, for that uh, introduction. Um, I will say that uh, although I'm the director for the NICO, uh, Commander Pettit and her, uh, her team, when I came here three, three and a half years ago, really taught me everything I need to know or, or you know, needed to know about uh, engaging in a program like this, managing people in a program like this, and really appreciating the amazing work that is done here. And so um, I have much to, to thank you for. Uh, Captain Kaufman, Dr. Graba, Dr. French, um, Jenna Vetter, Dr. Kelly, all those people who sort of really took a hole in the ground and envisioned uh, a program that this has become now over the last few years. And those of you who have come since then, Captain Cass, Melissa, and everybody else, I spend all day uh, talking about people who've helped contribute to the program. Um, I also want to uh, thank Chairman Chu for uh, joining us today. Obviously, um, this is a, a dual effort here, and so I appreciate you inviting us and making us a part of this uh, grand announcement as well. Uh, we've had the opportunity to uh, celebrate together uh, over the last year or two, you, your 50th uh, anniversary, ours, our fifth. Um, but I think somewhere in that sort of uh, uh, youth and sort of maturity, we have this wonderful um, program to, uh, to uh, announce to you today. So thank you very much. Colonel Heimel, as always, uh, it's been a long time, what, 12 hours or so since I saw you last? <laughs> Great to have you here. And especially the support of the leadership uh, of, of Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. You kind of, we talk about the connective tissue that holds us all together. You know, Colonel Heimel has been a strong advocate for what we do uh, here. His predecessor, General Clark, obviously a very strong advocate as well. And his predecessor, Admiral Stocks, when these programs were all just sort of uh, sprouting uh, young saplings, a very strong advocate as well. And so Colonel Heimel continues that uh, legacy of, of advocacy and leadership uh, that makes our program so successful. So thank you. I'd also like to call out a couple of additional folks. Master Chief uh, Robinson, I don't know, I haven't seen her, but. She's our senior enlisted leader here, and she uh, herds uh, a very uh, effective and motivated group of young hospital corpsmen, Navy hospital corpsmen, who really helped behind the scenes to help uh, get things set up here last night. So I'd like to thank them uh, specifically. Also, uh, our public affairs officer support, clearly that's a, an important part here, uh, both from Walter Reed, National Endowment for the Arts, and then our own, our fairly new employee, Ms. Mickey Galoon, who um, was running around yesterday, uh, several days post due. Uh, for, if you've seen her, she's uh, she's very pregnant, um, and I was convinced she actually had, con had talked the baby into delaying delivery while uh, preparing for this. Now I'm convinced it was the running around yesterday that thankfully put her into labor last night. So, <laughs> but if uh, we see Nikki, uh, Mickey, uh, give her a lot of thanks. So, um, six years ago. The National Intrepid Center of Excellence at uh, Walter E. Bethesda opened its doors and embarked on our honorable mission of improving the lives of patients and families impacted by the traumatic brain injury and psychological health concerns. At the NICO, we employ a unique and holistic approach to clinical treatment using interdisciplinary teams and complementary and integrative medicine in a collaborative effort with patients, families, providers, and researchers. Recognizing the value of creative arts therapy, NICO has incorporated visual art therapy, music therapy, dance and movement therapy, therapeutic writing sessions, and creative writing workshops into our integrated and multidisciplinary team confronting traumatic brain injury and associated psychological health concerns such as post-traumatic stress disorder. These are frequently described as the invisible wounds of war. Uh, integrated as a standard modality in both our intensive outpatient programs and in the long-term outpatient services that we offer, creative arts therapy uh, really helps provide a lot of the visibility uh, to these injuries. Uh, resulting in improved communication and accelerated treatment and healing for the patients and their families. We began our partnership with the NEA in 2011 when we discussed with them a, a way to kind of pilot our art therapy program um, and advance the opportunity of further art therapy research and the benefits of art to the service members and families we're serving. The NICO joined the NEA's Military Healing Arts Network and welcomed initially its creative writing uh, program, the Operation Homecoming, in January of 2012. The successful year-long pilot project uh, took place in a clinical setting consisting of expressive writing workshops and a formal four-week uh, creative writing storytelling uh, series. So over the years, the creative arts therapy services have evolved here at NICO, but they continue to deliver first-class, patient-focused care while providing opportunities for expanded treatment options 
and advancements in research due to the unwavering support not only of the military health system and its leadership, but also our steadfast collaboration with a partner uh, in the NEA. And our partnership with them allows us to push the bounds of innovation, share best practices, and provide greater opportunities to advance medical research. NICO is honored to have been part of the pilot program, and with the support of the NEA, our program has been replicated at the Intrepid Spirit at Fort Belvoir, just uh, on the other side of the Beltway. Indeed, Fort Belvoir's Intrepid Spirit will serve as the blueprint for the plan to expand the program to new uh, Department of Defense and uh, Veterans Health Administration clinical sites that join the Healing Arts Network and supporting a robust clinical and research mission throughout the network, again, describing this connective tissue. Um, I would say a program like this, the expansion, is, is a significant uh, piece of fortifying the traumatic brain injury care network within the military health system and in the VA. Um, and it's, you know, I think it'll be a signature program that others uh, follow uh, as we fortify that, uh, that network. And finally, giving back to the military as we um, committed, uh, I'm sorry, giving back to the military is a committed focus of the NEA, and we as, a, as representatives of a health system dedicated to caring for military service members and their families are honored to partner with them to help bring these benefits and dedicated support to the men and women at military and veterans health administration administration treatment facilities across the national expanding uh, Creative Forces Network. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Greenhalgh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it is a special honor to welcome a national leader whose vision, ongoing support, and innovative spirit have meant so much to so many. Please welcome the 11th Chairman of the National Endowment of the Arts, Chairman Janet Chu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. It is such an honor to be able to join you this morning here at the National Intrepid Center of Excellence at Walter Reed. I want to thank the leadership at Walter Reed, not just for hosting us this morning, but for working side by side with us over the past five years. Colonel Heimel, director of Walter Reed, and Captain Walt Greenhalch, director of the NICO, uh, and Commander Pettit, thank you so much, Ms. Raiders Tort, uh, your colleagues, and I want to thank our partners at the Department of Defense. Our work with service members would not be possible without you. And then we also have the staff at the National Endowment for the Arts, whose work is specifically focused upon this initiative. Bill O'Brien, thank you so much, our Senior Innovation Advisor, for your efforts in leading the Creative Forces Program. Thank you so much to the leadership team who works with Bill O'Brien, who come from a number of locations. You're bringing your expertise and your insights to our national expansion efforts. Dr. Sarah Cass, founder of the CAS Group, United States Navy captain retired, former deputy commander of the NICO, Anne Marie, Anne Marie O'Malley, uh, graduate of the United States Air Force Academy and veteran who is providing strategic and operational support to the Creative Forces Initiative. Retired General Nolan Bivens, thank you so much. Founder and president of the Leader Six organization, retired Brigadier General of the United States Army. And from Americans for the Arts, Mara Walker, Chief Operating Officer, Marita Wester, Senior Director of the Arts Policy, and our creative arts therapists, uh, thank you, who are really making things happen. Melissa Walker, Jessica Gata, Rebecca Voudreau. So over the past 15 years, American troops have faced perpetual conf conflict, many of them serving multiple doors, tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan, They've dedicated their lives and they've made sacrifices to preserve our safety and our freedom. And so supporting a successful transition back into their home communities after they've completed their assignment, especially for those who have been affected as a result of their service, as, who have been injured. It's not just the responsibility of the Department of Defense or Veterans Affairs, it is a duty that's shared by all of us. And that's why the National Endowment for the Arts is pleased to be able to announce the expansion of the initiative, Creative Forces NEA Military Healing Arts Network. So this initiative is a partnership between the National Endowment for the Arts and the Department of Defense to take the power that the arts have to promote the health and well-being of our service members, particularly those who've been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, other psychological health conditions. 
These invisible wounds of war can have a major physical and emotional impact, both on those who experience them and their families, but we've seen transformational changes already as a result of being engaged in the arts. So the seeds of this program began in 2004 with the National Endowment for the Arts Operation Homecoming program. So for five years, Operation Homecoming conducted more than 60 writing workshops for troops and veterans and their families at military installations in the United States and overseas. And these writing workshops gave individuals an opportunity to tell their stories and write their way through sometimes painful experiences. And the response was tremendous. More than 12,000 pages of short stories and poems and memoirs and letters were submitted. But we wanted to go further so in, instead of conducting one or two day workshops, we knew that the impact could be deeper and more meaningful if service members could engage with the arts over a longer period of time. Post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury are notoriously complex conditions to treat. And so treatment typically requires care over a longer period of time. So six years later in 2011, we began to work with NICO clinicians here at Walter Reed to develop a therapeutic writing program. And this functioned in tandem with the NICO's Creative Arts Therapies Program, which at that time included visual arts therapy and has since expanded to include music therapy as well. And two years after that, in 2013, we expanded our work to the NICO Intrepid Spirit One at Fort Belvoir, where the National Endowment for the Arts continues to support therapeutic writing, music, and art therapy. So many of these service members who participated in these programs acknowledged improvements. Because they get to create through this arts program, they can now manage their stress. Their memory is more enhanced. They can communicate more clearly, and they can manage their physical pain better. And we believe that the arts have allowed them to tap into the meaning and the value of their own lives, which were always there, but may have been buried during times of combat. And family members and caregivers also noticed significant and positive changes in their loved ones. 100% of the caregivers at the Fort Belvoir program said that they experienced positive results in the service members who participated in the Creative Arts Therapies program. One spouse whose husband received treatment at Walter Reed also noted that the arts therapies healed family disruption. One service member said, Art therapy provided the venue for me to communicate how I was actually feeling. Previously, I had been unwilling or unable to explain how tortured I felt. Art therapy provided the outlet, which directly impacted one of the most important course changes of my life. One of our writing instructors, Ron Capps, who is himself a veteran, explained the success of the creative writing therapy in this way. The way I think of it is as if you have this traumatic memory and it's hot or radioactive. You pick it up with your bare hand, your bare brain, so to speak. You can't manage it, it's unmanageable. But by putting art or music or writing in between, you have a filter. It's like putting on a pair of gloves. You can reach out and pick it up, work with it, shape it, you can control it, it doesn't control you. And so we're very appreciative that the President and Congress recognized the success of this program and believed in our ability to do more. And in fiscal year 2016, they authorized a $1.97 million budget increase for the National Endowment for the Arts, specifically allocated to expand the impact of our military healing arts program. And this has all brought us here to today. Our expansion plans have come as a result of service members saying that they want this program to be closer to their communities as they make a transition back into civilian life. And so with this budget increase, we will now support creative arts therapies at 10 more sites for a total of 12 sites across the nation. We have five additional locations that have already committed to joining the network. The Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton in Oceanside, California. Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma, Washington, Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson in Anchorage, Alaska, 
and Fort Hood in Killeen, Texas. And we plan to have all 12 participating sites totally confirmed and in place by the end of the first quarter in 2017. We considered five criteria when selecting these clinical locations. One is readiness. All of these expansion sites already have clinical services for traumatic brain injury, psychological health conditions. They already have them in place. So we would be complementing their existing services to create a more holistic treatment plan. And another selection criteria is multiple service branches. Each selected site treats a diversity of multiple military service branches, service types, duty statuses, which will allow us to reach as many different types of individuals as possible. And then the third criterion involves the location. Every selected site allows us to reach service members from many different geographic areas, and this will allow us to extend the program's reach to remote and isolated locations where before a service member had less opportunity to participate in these innovative treatment methods if she or he lived too far from a designated location. The fourth criterion is population density. These newly designated areas have robust populations of both active duty military members and veterans, and in 2012, 39 U.S. metro areas accounted for approximately 50% of the country's military population. So we wanted to make sure that we were targeting those areas. And then finally, the fifth criterion is leadership. In each of the locations, the leadership believes in the healing power of the arts, and it's committed to including the arts in their integrative care approach. This is critical to the success of our work together, and we applaud the leadership at each of these sites for their vision and unceasing quest to better serve our service members. So in addition to these clinical sites, we're also developing a network of community-based nonprofit organizations that are out in the community providing healing arts programs for members of the military, veterans, and their families, particularly in communities where our clinical sites are located. And this part of the expansion will support the reintegration for people leaving a medical center by allowing them to continue arts programming, and it will address individuals who need treatment but fear the possible stigma of receiving ongoing clinical care. It will allow us also to build upon the scientific research and the evaluation that we've been conducting in the clinical settings and allows us to measure impacts, the benefits of arts participation in the community settings. Americans for the Arts, the nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing and advocating for the arts across America, will be our partner for the community piece of the expansion. We're so appreciative of that. And we'll also be working with our colleagues at state arts agencies and regional arts organizations in each of the confirmed geographic locations. And then the final piece of our Creative Forces expansion will focus on the building the, of the capacity for this type of military healing arts work. We're in the process of creating a portal of resources and tools that will help communities and arts organizations better understand how to support service members, veterans, and their families, and improve the dialogue and build deeper connections across local military and civilian populations. And we expect this to go live in the coming months. So it's a privilege and an honor for us to be part of a program that benefits the brave men and women who so proudly serve the United States of America. And so to our partners at the United States Department of Defense, thank you for making this work possible. To our veterans and our active duty military here today, we are indebted to your service. We're honored to be able to express our appreciation to you by supporting you through the arts. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Chu. Um, as you've heard today, the creative arts have demonstrated the power of transformational change in the lives of service members and their families. The impact is seen and shared through the creative efforts of each artist. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Rusty Nessner, um, one of our many artists. He has joined us today to put a face to the diverse opportunities we have to employ the creative arts to change lives. Mr. Nessner.
Thank you all very much for having me today. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm honored to be here, honored to be invited to this uh, event, and it's good to be home. It's been three years since I've been back here, and uh, it still feels like home. It's a very comfortable environment. So if you're wondering, uh, after the uh, introduction, who I am sitting between these great minds, I'm the uh, guinea pig, essentially, <laughs> for all this. Uh, <laughs> not really. Um, so on my way up here from Harrisonburg, Virginia, a sleepy little Virginia town uh, on, on 66, I realized that I was going to have to do some stress management today on uh, 66. And uh, so what do you do? You just turn on the music and uh, enjoy the ride. Um, so again, it, it's a pleasure being up here. Uh, tell you briefly about my experiences. I was on SEAL Team 10 uh, in Afghanistan, uh, where I received a traumatic brain injury and other battlefield injuries. Um, I came to NICO and uh, I didn't know what to expect and frankly I was just, uh, I, I didn't want to be here and I didn't want to involve myself in any of this. Um, I soon learned that uh, I was completely wrong to think that. Uh, the staff and everybody here was so professional, kind, courteous, and receptive to what I was going through and what other veterans are going through. Um, so just like many other service members that come here, I naturally gravitated towards the arts. Um, and it's so powerful in that it, uh, it's, it's a way for you to express what's going on mentally without having said anything at all. Um, you know, it, it gives veterans, it gives artists two things. It gives you the ability to filter out all this that's going around you, the chaos when you get back from overseas. Um, you don't even know up from down. You're just trying to get by one day at a time. So focusing and channeling your energy into one thing is just incredibly therapeutic. Um, so that was what I was able to do, you know, whether it's one brush stroke at a time, one sentence at a time, um, whatever it is, it, it allows for that cathartic response to resonate. Um, and then you get the tangible, number two, you get the tangible outcome of your work. So you can put effort into whatever it is that you're working on and at the end of the day you have it you have your what it is that's going on in your in your brain right there in front of you and you can either talk about it or not talk about it but people can see it it's tangible it's there you've done that and through it throughout that creative process it's not all easy you go through ups you go through downs you go through self-questioning self-doubt um, is this what I want to be showing the world is this something that I'm creating for a purpose, for me, for who, who am I doing this for? So that self-discovery is, uh, is essential in healing. Um, and I'm just so proud that we have all of you out there solving these, uh, or attempting to solve these, these huge questions um, that we have in regards to veterans' mental health. Um, there's undoubtedly so many different things out there to offer, fly fishing, uh, hiking, uh, whatever it is. But again, the arts is just, I don't think there's a better way to do it. There it is, there's what's going on inside you. Here, share it with everybody and then go from there. Now you can explore other avenues of life. I can do this, I can make that artwork, now I can do more, I can do more. Um, I can reintegrate and, and come back and transition into society. Um, so again, I'm, I'm extremely excited about uh, the initiative uh, being started here at uh, Walter Reed and NICO, um, and I'm just thrilled to see the steps forward in art therapy. Um, so again, thank you all very, very much for having me. Um, candid shooting from the hip here, so please talk to me afterwards, and I'd love to, love to have conversations with you. So thank you so much. for your powerful story. And thank you all for joining us today as we celebrate the new opportunities that expansion of the NEA's initiative to 10 sites across our great nation will bring. Um, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day.